Hello and welcome to another one in the series of the Ellis Clark how-to videos. Today what I thought we'd look at is what goes on with a press flow when you order one for weathering. But also on this we'll cover how the detail pack fits and where they go uh, for your own model and maybe some ideas for yourself on uh, how to weather them and uh, they're a slightly different way of weathering rather than just paints. So uh, let's move on now and see and have a look at a press flow. Okay, the next phase that we're going to go on to is prepping the model for weathering. I like to use a Humbro Matte 186 Brown, um, which is used to paint the wheels themselves before we go into the spray booth. I'm just going to give this a bit of a mix up um, and capillary some out onto my little uh, palette. All we're doing is, yes the wheels are chemically blackened and they look quite nice, but they look far nicer once they're actually weathered in and painted properly. We just turn the wheel round by hand because we are going to spray over these as well in a few minutes and then just do the wheel rim. If you do it carefully enough you're going to get nothing on, on the actual uh, running edge of the wheel that's going to affect it. So same again on the next wheel, a little bit more paint on, just spin them round. <coughs> wheel rim And then we'll repeat again on the other side. So that's that bit done. Okay, now that the model has dried from being varnished, um, what we're now going to do is start to go on to the actual spraying of the model. And for this, I'm going to use a roof dirt by Life Colour, a frame dirt by Life Colour, and a dust type 2 by Life Colour. Modeling pigments by uh, Ammo which is a light dust colour, and then two, um, a black and a dark brown, which I'll mix together to make like an oily colour. The first thing that I'm going to do is to mix some colour up into the spray br brush itself. Now, most of mine, because I'm using them all the time, are actually ready to go. Um, they've had a little bit of water fitted to them because I'm weathering so many things day in, day out. Mine are sort of ready to go. And because obviously they're all water based, we're just going to put some paint straight into the pot. Probably half to a quarter of a pot and a little bit of water in just to thin it down a little bit. And the consistency is quite, quite runny, but a little, probably a bit like cream. Okay, now what we've done is move over to the spray booth. Although it's at the side of my desk, we've just had to move around a little bit with the cameras, etc. And the first thing we're going to do, we've got us paint in here. I'm going to spray the underframe now. These are going to be a, um, a medium weathered. So they're not going to be too, too blathered, as I like to call it. And we're doing all the underneath first. And then we'll do some along the side of the saw bar, around the buffer beam area making sure we're getting all of it covered on all sides. So every angle we can get to. And the next thing that I'm going to do is just move the wheels around a little bit so that we can uh, make sure that they're all fully covered from the original colour of that brown. Makes everything a little bit more uniform and I'm sure you'll agree when you see them that the, the wheels look a lot better um, for a complete weathered look rather than them being as nice as they are the chemically blackened ones. And then last of all on this I'd just like to put a little bit up the sides of the model to start the initial weathering. It's where it does help to have a, a cake stand that rotates. The reason this one's a lot longer is as times on weathering, obviously um, A3s and A4s and locos like that, so they do all sit on here. So I've not changed anything for you, I've just left the setup as normal. So we're just going to go around, get a reasonable coat and on the top for this. And then once that's done and we're happy with how much we've got on, Already you can see it's starting to change the look of the model. 
I'm just going to pause there and just change over to a the next colour, which is a roof dirt grey. We've now changed over the airbrush to a Valero, sorry, life colour even, roof dirt, which is sort of a, uh, a grey colour. I've not bothered washing the pot out. The reason for that is it's all going to mix together and, and just create a slightly different tone. Uh, spraying nice now. What we're going to do, we're not actually spraying the model all over. We're just doing the tops. I'll point with, with a scalpel. I'm just going to do some highlights on these um, it's a bit of an horrible word, but I believe they're called sort of gussets that are a uh, strengthener for the, for the actual wagon in real life. So we're just doing where the cement would sit as in dust just falling down. And this is the first part of the actual cement style weathering. So we're just gently, a little bit of highlighting along the top on all the surfaces where cement would collect and that also includes the top of the chassis etc and we'll just put a little bit up the sides where it's run down where you, if you look on the pictures of, of prototype press flows you do get that so same again along the sides now you could do this very carefully with dry brush uh, with dry brush technique with a flat brush and just gently just tone it down if you don't have a spray brush so it's not something that you couldn't do yourself if you know you don't have to have all this set up although a spray brush does help you could do it without and then just going to hold it over and just along the top try to get it in a position where you can see so it's not a natural position for me to, to weather along the top where you get a load of build up around all these walkways Don't forget with weathering, sometimes less is more. And that is that one complete for this colour. Right, we've now changed over the paint again. And this time we've gone to the life colour type 2 dust. All I've done, put it straight in, mix it straight back up, make sure it's spraying. Once again, I've not bothered cleaning out because it just varies the colour. First of all, this time, I'm going to turn the model upside down and all the underneath, the hopper area, the discharge areas, the pipe work, etc. I'm just going to spray it in this light dust colour. I'm not going to put it on too heavy so that it, it makes it white or a very light grey. And just on the end there, on the end of the discharge nozzle, Round the brake here and that's that first bit done we can then add a little bit along the top of the springs just ever so lightly and same again we're just going to add a little bit of highlight on the top of these supporting um, strengthening plates that are just at a sort of a 30 degree angle coming down we'll move the model around ever so slowly just work his way along. Depends how heavy we want the model weathering. Like I say, this one's a, a medium sort of weathered. Yeah, once again, you could do this with a with a dry brush, but just need to uh, a little bit more technique to just make sure you're happy with it. But all you're doing is just highlighting. Put a few runs down from the top. Bit on the top of the sole bar and around the strings, areas where you think it would collect, and definitely on the top of the air tanks here, where they're a flat surface. Once again, on top of the walkways. And once we're happy with that, that is everything done with the spray gun nothing else to do spray gun now everything else is done with either um, weathering powders or paint applied by brush and a little dry brushing etc so I'm going to clean the gun out now and we'll come back in a moment or two we've now moved across from 
and spray booth back to my workbench. Um, I've put a piece of um, like kitchen towel down just to protect the work surface. Only reason being is the dust does get everywhere and it's easier just to clean it up afterwards and put it straight into the bin. Just keeps my work surface clean. Um, for this then, next phase, we're going to use the modeling pigments from Ammo. You could use MIG weathering powders. They'll probably do very similar color. This one's called Light Dust. Um, a cheap paintbrush, and by that I'm almost on about a, a kiddies paintbrush because we're going to be using some glue with it. And then two flat brushes that I use for putting on the weathering uh, pigment. I have some mixed up um, glue in here that's PVA glue like you'd use for ballasting. So it's actually sort of 50-50 glue, water, little tiny little bit of uh, washing up liquid. Um, or you could use the ready made one by um, Batman that they do on their uh, scenery range. So I'll just give that a quick shake to make sure all the glues mixed together. And then I'm going to capillary some out onto my little palette. There's enough there for the model. So what we're actually gonna do is something that's a little bit different. We're gonna use the PVA glue that we'd use normally for ballasting, but we're gonna use it to hold the pigments on. And they do stay on very, very nicely when, when, the, when you finish with them. So we start on the top, because obviously everything is easy to work down. And we're just literally running some glue in areas that we think we have looked at pictures and we know that the uh, cement dust would stay and then crust, crustate and become literally like a concrete on top of the, on top of the uh, actual wagon, which working its way along. Not covering the whole surface up, we just have noticed from pictures that they tend to run one area. You can put a third one down if you really want to on the edge. It's totally up to you, but I will stress again, less is more. So we do a cider piece, flat brush, and then just literally dab the item on. It'll look a bit, oh, what have I done? But it'll soon change, as you'll see in a moment. And this just at, at, um, gives a complete three-dimensional form to the weathering. It totally changes the wagon. So I'll just get the flat brush that I use for taking it off. Just give the wagon a little tap, just to get rid of most of it. And then we'll bring that back off. And as you can see already, um, it's now starting to get the um, concrete type look that we're, that we're after from the cement. Turn it round, we'll do the other side at the top. I tend to do the tops first, it's just how I worked my own way of doing them. I'm not saying it's right, you can you could do a side next or whatever, but I just like to do the tops and work down. Same again, however you want to do it. Couple of runs. Pick it. This is why I use the tissue paper now because I can pick some of it back up as well. Because obviously it, we like to save as much of it as possible and, and reuse what we don't use. The top will be done in a few moments, and then we'll do a side. Okay, as you can see now, if I hold that to the camera, that's the top more or less done now. And what we're now going to do is we're going to do a side. So I'll just leave the model literally on its side slightly, and because we're not wanting everything to be covered in it i'm just doing a slight touch of the glue of the pva glue along the edges here we'll do some runs down just nice and nice small runs don't want anything massive i say it depends how heavy you want your model weathered but and obviously we do offer this service on the website um, and you can specify however you want them or or lightly weathered whatever you require and I'll vary them accordingly for you just making sure it's all in and then once again turn it over a little tap and we'll just work down and there you go that's the side done Next part that we're going to cover is just a little bit on the uh, saw bar where it's collected along these edges and occasionally you can get a little bit on the step there, maybe a little bit on the spring, 
um, on the top to the springs. Don't overdo it on there because I think it'll spoil the detail of the model. And once again, less is more. You know, it is a model at the end of the day. I know sometimes they've really got caked in it. But I think sometimes if we do too much, it looks wrong. It looks like it's, it's, it's overkill in my opinion. So it's just nice to just have that little bit. Another area that it did get it was round the back of these discharge handles and down these sides. A little bit almost like snow collects sometimes when it, when it drifts. It's a little bit like that, I suppose, in a way. Um, so we'll just get a little bit more up there. And um, that's that end done. Another nice one I like to do every so often, not on each wagon, but now and again, it's just a little bit on the top of the buffers where it's collected. It just adds a little bit more texture and colour to the model. And we'll do the same on this end here. But this time we're not going to put any round on as much around the saw bar. We'll just put a little bit there. That's that. And that is that side done. Just a little cleaning off with the soft brush. And that's that side complete. Right, the last process, um, once we've finished the actual um, dust weathering, is to clean a few little bits off, and by that I'm going to use a cotton wool bud, a little bit of methylated spirits, and just a tiny touch on the end of the cotton wool bud, and I think it just adds, we've got the brake lever here with the white of the end of the handle, so I like to just clean that back, because if you think about it, somebody would have a cloth or rag, it would be a little bit more cleaned. And also the handles, the discharge handles, they would be moved up and down and would be cleaned more. And that's these here as well. So I just take, not cleaning them back to being perfect again, but we're just taking some of the item off just to add a little bit more interest to the model. There's also on each side a tiny little discharge handle there with a little white top on it. So I just clean those back. It's only subtle, but it's there. Next thing I'm going to use is a really fine brush and just a little bit of a brownie rust colour and I'm just going to highlight the brake the brick, uh, pads because obviously these are a cast item so they would stay a little bit browner than the rest and it's just a little bit of a highlight that just your eye just sees and it just makes the model a different shade different colour so it just work its way along those and these will dry a lot darker than the actual colour. Um, so it's not as bright as it may appear initially. Last thing that we'll do on this with the rust side is we'll just highlight a few little bits of bolt heads, etc. Maybe a bit on the, that spring that we put on, on the detail pack. A few little blobs. You could do a little bit more dry brushing on your own if you wanted. Just a few little bits down this area of the brake, of the brake lever just to highlight some bits and pieces that's that little bit done and then very last but not least I'll just pop that brush in the water to dry this is where we said we'd use the brown mixed with a little bit of black to make an oily colour because we're going to highlight the um, brake blocks sorry brake blocks um, I'm going to highlight the actual um, axle boxes a little bit just gives them a little bit of a colour so we'll paint up into the axle box area and then we'll just quickly wipe it back little bit down onto the uh, onto the tie bar that holds the axle box in and also on that we'll do a little bit on the end for the grease on the end of the buffers just take a little bit of paint off we'll do a little bit on the spring detail just darken them up a little bit in this one might not do it on every model just how you feel you want to do it just highlight those a little bit 
and that is your press flow weathered normally take about an hour hour and a half admittedly on this one um, we've not done every side on this we will do once once the video is finished but I just wanted to give you a, an idea of weathering a press flow and some ideas maybe for your own models um, this service is available on from ourselves uh, it's myself that does it uh, and there's any form of weathering that you require on your press flow can be done uh, details are on the website of which there'll be a link at the end of the video thanks a lot for watching if you've got any questions or any anything that you uh, would like to know yourself a little bit more in detail you can always give us a ring or drop us an email at Ellis Clark Trains thanks for your time and uh, have some happy modelling